Thank you, ma'am, for your tireless reading of the academic day report. Now it's time to listen to a Malaysian voice. Salamat datang. It's my honor and privilege to invite the chief guest of the day, Mr. Ahmad Fajarazam bin Abdul Jalil, Consulate General, Embassy of Malaysia, to address the gathering. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramatunisa Abdul Rahman, uh, Dr. Sumaya, uh, Dr. Nadira Abdul Kamal, uh, Mr. Nurul Habib, and Mr. Sheikh Daud, uh, and the rest of the faculty and uh, the student population of this uh, wonderful college. At the outset, I would like to express my deep appreciation to the organizers, to all of you, for inviting me here. In fact, this is my first time to come to uh, this part of Tamil Nadu. Uh, I, the furthest south I've been to was in Madurai. So thank you, thank you very much for this invitation. I know, I don't think this is my only time. I hope this will be more times that I'll be able to come to Kilakarai and to see this wonderful part of India. Um, in fact, uh, I've just finished a very, very tough assignment uh, last week. For your information, the Prime Minister of Malaysia Dr. Sri Najib visited Chennai from 30th to 31st March to meet with the Malaysian community as well as to meet with the Tamil community here. And then subsequently he went to New Delhi and just two days ago he left New Delhi to return to Kuala Lumpur. And uh, just this, this weekend we also have one of our senior officers for the foreign ministry, a lady who will be visiting Chennai. So Alhamdulillah, I have this small gap to come to Kilakarai at this opportune moment to meet with all of you. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. I would like to speak uh, not so much uh, because one thing I really struck me about this part of Tamil Nadu or this part of India is the harmonious nature, the multicultural and the multi-religious nature of this part of India, which really astounded me. I've been staying here for one year in Chennai and I've traveled all throughout South of India. I even went up north but I find the level of uh, social harmony, the, st the level of community friendliness is unique in Tamil Nadu. And I understand much of this comes from the deep south of Tamil Nadu. For your information, 8% of the Malaysian population are people of Indian origin. And this 8% majority are from Tamil Nadu. Yeah? Over 90% of them are from Tamil Nadu. You talk about the areas of Trichy, southwards, their origins are from here. So there's a lot of similarity between Malaysian culture and also Indian culture, specifically the culture in Tamil Nadu. I was having some of the snacks here. Some of the snacks that you provide are 100% as the snacks that we eat in Malaysia. So it is that deep, the kind of cultural, historical and social links. Now, my Prime Minister, while he was in Tamil Nadu, spoke about the same thing. And the links, these cultural and historical and social links have been around for well over not only hundreds of years, but even thousands of years. Um, one thing that Malaysia has deep gratitude with the people of Tamil Nadu is the introduction of language, the introduction of trade, even the introduction of beliefs. Uh, it was Tamil Muslim traders along with Arab Muslim traders and Chinese Muslim traders that came to our shores and enlightened us to the religion of Islam. As well as other kinds of philosophies that we come from India, that is what makes Malaysia so unique. So I would like to take the opportunity to speak to you about three things only. Three things which I think is very, very important, which I feel from my personal behalf, I would like to impart to you. Number one is the value of moderation. Number two is the value of education. And number three is the value of actualizing, increasing your economic worth. Let me go to the first one, which is moderation. Maybe you are wondering, what does moderation mean? Moderation is simply being anti-radical anti or anti-extremism. And I think this is a very important message to bring to you. From a country that is, Malaysia is also a, in, 
religious, uh, as well, multi-religious and multicultural country. And we value the idea of moderation. This idea of moderation means having the right kind of thinking. I think I do not need to explain to all of you the kind of troubles that are happening in other parts of the world, especially in the Middle East. It is something, it's a subject that perhaps people do not want to speak, but I think it's very important for me to speak to you because you are the other half of society which is equally important to the other half of society because it is in your hands you will rear your children. It is in your hands who will advise, who will work along with your husbands and your sons and your daughters in order to improve your society. And the value of moderation is very, very important. It's basically very simple. Moderation means you really stand to the tenets of your belief. And if you really read into the tenets of a belief, it really values the cooperation between cultures. It really values the cooperation between religions. It values the cooperation between people of different backgrounds. And I think you are uniquely positioned here in Tamil Nadu to actualize it. Show the value and duty of your faith to inculcate interfaith, interreligious, intercultural harmony. And that is a great value that I think you can play a better and good part. But how do you do it? How do you do it? In what way can you do it? And which goes to the right two points. Number, number two, education and also economy. Because how can you calculate a good level of moderation is most importantly through the right kind of education. And I think your institution is rightfully placed to inculcate this kind of wonderful education. I think your education is geared towards two basic values. Number one, your education is geared towards development. And number three, your kind of education gives equal opportunity to ladies of the society to also be involved in economic development. I see at the level of faculties that you have, the largest faculty that you have is Bio, uh, in the IT, computer science sector, in the English sector. Now, these are the kind of faculties which are needed. Yeah. And I really, really implore you that you study well in this faculty. Choose the right kind of faculty. If the faculty is not available, maybe you can propose to the management to create new faculties. But please, when you choose the kind of uh, subject to study, Think about what you can do with that subject. You don't come in simply to study, but time, find some ways of how to think five years ahead of what you can do with that degree that you do. Number three is how it is related to the economic value. And this is something I really like to implore to all of you. You have spent several years in this um, university, this college to study. Your parents uh, or your family has spent a lot of money to ensure that you study. The best way of actualizing and cherishing your degree is to use your knowledge towards your economic advancement, whether it's yourself, whether it's your family or your community's economic advancement. And there are many ways towards it. Um, of course, employment is one way. Entrepreneurship is also another way. And I believe, and this is something that you can learn from the Malaysian experience. In Malaysia, as you know, my, my wife herself is a naval officer. Um, in one way, you know, while we were working, and when I was serving in Malaysia, she will continue to serve as a naval officer. Only when I came here to Chennai, she took a temporary uh, stop from her work. But after she returned, she might continue again. So this is something which is very usual in Malaysia. In certain parts of Malaysia, you have a market. The market is only staffed by women because the women are considered to be more used to do business. Uh, so this is the experience in Malaysia. I think this is something that is of value. Considering that trade and economy is something that we learn from Southern India, I'm sure this is something that your, once you have done you know, computer science, you've done uh, home sciences, you've done English, you can actualize this knowledge towards your economic advancement. And this is something which is very, very important. Um, 
So these are the three things that I wish to convey to all of you. Uh, the value of moderation, the value of education, and the value of the economy. I know you are just beginning your journey of your life, and you will have many, many more years to go ahead. My biggest advice is to look at what you have studied and what you can contribute back, and how you can further this kind of um, experience, both on the education level as well as in an, on the economic level. So. Uh, I bid you all the best in your studies. I really, really hope of more success. And I'm confident that this will not be my last trip. I will definitely take the opportunity to come here again. And I wish to see more success from each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Amidst your tightly packed schedule, you have come to see the backward land of Tamil Nadu. Inshallah, when you come next time, please bring your Prime Minister uh, with you. Uh, it was surprising to know uh, that the Otumavu, Yellu and Todal are branded uh, snacks of Malaysia. And uh, uh, listening to this, uh, Kelakarai uh, people should not uh, raise uh, the amount of these sweets. Build cultural harmony through education. Choose the area of education which can develop you and the country together and which offers you a lot of opportunities. And the value of economy depends on the value of education you have taken up. Thank you so much, sir. May I now have the privilege of uh, calling the guest of honor, Lieutenant Commander Siti Noor Mawar Binti Abdul Rahman to deliver her special address. And uh, again, it's our pleasure to listen to um, Madam uh, through your unheard voice. Thank you so much. Academic success depends on research, publication, and other academic achievements. This is the mantra value that our principal tries to instill in the minds of not only the faculty members, but among the students too. Being an academic administrator, she has understood the importance and essence of research, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Only consistent and constant research can prevent us from being outdated. In order to keep us upgraded and updated in our respective fields of knowledge and to make us socially responsible and contributing citizens, our management magnanimously encourages thoughtfully appreciates and generously acknowledges us with awards and incentives. It's time to recognize the staff and students for their outstanding performances. The real aim of education does not confine to the textbook learning, but includes many other areas which import overall excellence in a student's life. Our TBAKC enfolds in the education caliber, but it does not stop there. Values weave the very texture of life of TBKC culture and conspicuous. Gentleness, helping hands, and loving hearts are what you can see in different activities. In TBKC, we are seeded with these values. TBKC does not fail in recognizing the striving souls and offering laurels. We treasure these moments as our college memories. Here, we have the achievers who strive to inscribe their name in the awards of achievement. I feel proud to call the following achievers. I call Ms. M. Naufia of 3rd B. English Literature. She receives the award of cash prize, rupees 1150.
I invite Ms. M. V. Fatima Faziha of 3rd BSEIT. She receives the cash award of Rs. 1,150. I invite D. Amina Bivi of the B third BSc Max. She receives the award of rupees 750. I invite Ms. M. Hashira of 3rd BSE IT. She receives the cash award of Rs. 650. Thank you, sir. Student life is a tough life since they have to take a decision early in the morning every day. What decision you know? Whether to go to the college or not. What a pity. Girls, will you believe if I say there is a girl amidst you who never missed her college even for a single day in three years of her study? I am not lying, but dying with surprise. Yes, she is from the calculus department. Yes, it's Rahimun Nisha from third BSc Mathematics. I request her to come on to the days to receive the 100% attendance award. Not even a single day. No stomach ache, no headache, not missed the bus or van even a single day. Unbelievable. Even hostel students are missing the bus. A, gra a great sound of applause for the students, strictly disciplined characteristics. Let the girl receive her head full of appreciation to shower it on her parents' heart. May I now request the guest of honor, Lieutenant Commander Siti Noor Mawar Binti Abdul Rahman to present her the award. For unenthusiastic readers, library is a comfortable AC room filled with sleeping pills in all its racks. The moment they take pill to read, they, sleep, they feel asleep and reach a world where no one can disturb them. Such a strong dosage will enter the moment the first page is opened. Beautiful dreams come and when they wake up, both the time and the dream are forgotten. But those who have huge appetite for reading, the time they spend in the library is insatiable. The more doses they take, the more alert their mind would become. This mind too gets beautiful dreams, but these are unforgettable dreams which illuminates the goal of life. Library Utilization Award for Staff. We have such a ravenous teacher from the Department of Commerce, Ms. Jayanti, who spends most of her time in the Abdul Kalam Central Library of our college. We request Ms. Jayanti to come on to the days to receive the award for maximum utilization of the library. And may I now invite the chief guest to present the award. Ms. Jayanti spends minimum of three hours, can't imagine, and maximum of six to eight hours per day in the library. Since she was motivated by one of her teachers and her own uncle, she likes to motivate the young students of her college, invariably of departments. Please remember us when you become a group two officer. And library utilization award for students. The library utilization award for students goes to C. Kamachi of third BSc IT. Playing and reading are two gifted hobbies of Kamachi. One is for her body and another for mind. Like her body, her mind too is flexible to spend a quality time in the library. Her mind's gym is our Abdul Kalam Central Library. 
she loves reading puranas whereas the unenthusiastic readers love only bananas the college confers cash awards for the deserving and merited staff of the college for their best academic performances the cash awards are instituted based on the academic performance indicator formulated by the ugc the awards are given in two levels such as a and b categories the performance of the principal vice vice principal hods deans and controller of examinations comes under a category and all other staff will come under b category under category a the winner is she holds a position of dignity she is worthy of receiving this award and honor she is also the hod of the department of home science it's none other than our dynamic energetic and vital principal dr s sumaya she receives a sum of rupees 8000 and her score is 161 may I now request the chief, the chief guest to give away the cash award she is a woman of recent trends introduced seaweed to the seashore people themselves she works hard to satisfy all the stakeholders of the college ungukitta unna kekanum ma'am 